Hey, millionaire. You're probably watching this because you spend a lot of time daydreaming about winning a giant lottery jackpot. Even if that dream came true, that doesn't mean you'll be rich. Sure, for a moment you'll be rich, but if you take a look at the stats, most lottery winners blow their cash, and some of them end up even poorer than they were before they got their big win. Sure, that's not what any lottery enthusiast wants to hear, but that's the cold hard truth. However, it doesn't have to be that way. This list of lottery winners proves that you can actually use a lottery win to your advantage. While other winners were spending their millions, these winners were being smart. And thanks to their clever approach to being overnight millionaires, they're still rich today. Let's hope they serve a good example to you if you ever win. Wouldn't it be great to be rich for the rest of your life? Let's take a closer look at how they did it. Brad Duke in 2005, Brad Duke was a 33-year-old fitness instructor working in Idaho. He played the lottery often, but you can bet that he had no idea his lucky day had come. At the time, the Powerball jackpot stood at a life-changing $220 million. But Brad didn't know that. He stopped for gas, checked his ticket, and was shocked by the clerk's reaction. He'd won. He wasn't sure how to react, so he grabbed the ticket and left before the clerk even had a chance to tell Brad that he'd won the jackpot. Brad spent the next few days thinking he'd only won a few thousand dollars. Imagine his surprise when he finally found out he was actually a millionaire. Brad didn't tell anyone about his good fortune except for his dad. Together, they sat and planned what to do with the money, while Brad kept living his life and going to work like nothing had changed. Brad took home $74 million after taxes and set a goal to grow his wealth to $1 billion within the next 15 years. He put together a team of lawyers and financial advisors to ensure he didn't blow his chance. Has he reached his $1 billion goal? Well, not exactly. Unfortunately, some of his big early investments went sour when the 2008 financial crisis hit. But even with his misfortune, he's definitely not broke. In 2016, he's estimated he's added $100 million to his fortune over the years. That's pretty impressive, and he also used his money for good by starting the Duke Foundation, which has raised about $1 million for residents of Idaho, and he did this all while still doing his normal job for years. Peter Lavery In 1996, Peter Lavery was working as a bus driver in Ireland. He was earning the equivalent of only a $300 paycheck, but luckily, he still found the money to play the UK National Lottery every now and then. He never made a better decision than purchasing that ticket. It was the winner of a huge jackpot worth 10.2 million British pounds. That's about $12.5 million. And, in case you don't know, lottery winners in the UK aren't required to pay tax on their winnings. That means he took home every cent that he won. That was a huge sum of money back in 1996, and Peter knew exactly what he wanted to do with it. It didn't take him long to invest in whiskey. He described it as a feeling like he'd won the lottery all over again. He went into a partnership with Cooley Whiskey Distillery to produce the well-reviewed Danny Boy Blended Irish Whiskey brand. That was his only investment, though he made a lot of not-too-big investments in many different businesses and also started buying property and real estate developments in Northern Ireland. He owns an impressive 30 properties. With the money he was making, he also started getting involved in an increasing number of local charities, including the Northern Ireland Children's Hospice and his own foundation, which he named after his parents. But how much money has he really earned out of his lottery winnings? You'll be impressed. He's actually succeeded in tripling his winnings over the last few decades, but he did step down from his whiskey business recently. Les Robbins In 1993, Les Robbins was working as a substitute teacher. Times were tough, though he was only earning $20,000 per semester. He loved working with the kids, but that's not a great salary, even for a job you enjoy. But it wouldn't matter soon. Les was the holder of a jackpot-winning Powerball ticket. You can only imagine how he felt when he learned he'd won the biggest jackpot the U.S. had ever seen at the time. He split his winnings with the woman who was his fiancée at the time. They've split up since, but that doesn't matter. Les still has a lot of money, and he needed to work out what to do with it. He wanted to do something he was passionate about and he loved working with kids so much that it seemed like a no-brainer. He set up Camp Winnegator, 
It's a dream day camp for kids, spread across 226 acres of land. Les added everything he could think of to his camp, a swimming pool, a gym, a mini golf course, and even horses that the kids could ride, and that was pretty much all he spent his winnings on. I guess, if you got your dream, you don't really need anything else. He did buy himself a Jeep, but with all that cash, that purchase seems modest. But where is he now? Well, aside from a problem with the company tasked with managing annuity payments that led to a court case that Les won, he's been keeping a low profile. He went back to being a substitute teacher back in 2000 when he was offered a long-term job, but it looks like he did that because he wanted to, not because he needed to. At the time, his camp was still operating at full capacity most days. Some sources say it closed recently, but others say it's still going. Deanna Simpson Deanna Simpson was working as a hairdresser in Sheffield, England before she won the lottery. Her life wasn't exactly easy. Money was seriously tight in her family, and at one time, Diana had less than $15 in her bank account. She was also trying to be there for her severely disabled brother, who she was very close to, but no amount of attention could have saved him. Sadly, he passed away due to an epileptic fit when he was just 40 years old. Deanna was devastated, but with so little money, she didn't have time to grieve the way she wanted. She was feeling pretty low when she says something incredible happened. She fell asleep one night in a deep depression and she had an amazing dream. In her dream, her late brother came to her and told her that if she bought a lottery ticket for the next draw, she would win the jackpot. He even told her exactly what numbers to play. When she woke up, she decided to listen to what her brother had told her. Sure, maybe it was just a dream, but she had nothing to lose by listening. She was a regular lottery player who always used the same numbers. But this time, she used the new numbers her brother had told her in her dream instead. When the draw happened, she was sitting in her brother's chair at her parents' house. They watched together as the numbers Deanna's brother had given her were read out, one by one, on the TV. Nobody could believe it. Deanna was now holding a winning UK national lottery ticket worth 5.3 million pounds, and it was all thanks to her late brother. That's over $6.6 .6 million. Deanna was one of the smart ones. She invested her lottery winnings into property over the next 20 years, and she even started her own property business with her son. She said she did spend some on luxuries, though mostly she loved being able to pamper her parents before their deaths. That was something Deanna felt was important because her parents had spent their whole lives working very hard and never earning very much money. In early 2020, she's now helping to train disability assistance dogs with a local charity called Support Dogs. She says it's something close to her heart because the dogs are trained to help people like her brother. Her lottery money means she has a house with a garden big enough to train puppies who will go on to help people with disabilities. Neil Wanless Making money as a cowboy can be pretty tough these days. 23-year-old Neil Wanless was struggling to pay his bills back in 2009. That is, until one day when he went to run errands in a nearby town called Winter. While he was there, he decided to pick up a Powerball ticket. It turned out the town's name was a good omen for Neil. He used the birthdays of his family members as his winning numbers. But even though he was joking about winning, he had no idea he really was holding the jackpot ticket. And it sure was the right time to win the Powerball jackpot because it had rolled over to an insane amount of cash. When Neil woke up and checked the lottery numbers, he was shocked to learn he was the only winner of a $232 million jackpot. He was so shocked that he took a whole month to collect his winnings, but that might have paid off. In that time, Neil and his family were planning what to do with their sudden wealth. But unlike most lottery winners, Neil had no interest in quitting his job. He loved what he did and decided he'd invest his lottery winnings back into his work. The first thing he did after collecting the money was to get the family a better ranch. So he bought 23 square miles of land worth $9.9 .9 million. He also got himself a house, which was a big upgrade on the trailer he'd been living in since the bank repossessed his family home. He used more of his cash to help his town in all sorts of generous ways. After that, he almost totally dropped off the radar, refusing to do interviews to try to maintain his privacy. That is, until he decided to sell his ranch. In 2020, he put the ginormous property on the market. 
His reason? He'd married a girl from Canada. They now spend most of their time in British Columbia and their winter home in Arizona. He just doesn't really use the ranch anymore. The ranch hasn't sold yet, but Neil dropped his asking price to $37.5 million. He's still considered one of the richest men in South Dakota. What would you invest your lottery winnings into? Let us know in the comments. Jason Fry Jason Fry from Florida is the type of person you'd call hardworking. Before he won the lottery, he was working three jobs. He was pouring concrete, digging wells, and working as a bartender at night. But even with all that work, he had almost no money. In fact, it was so bad that he was about to lose his property. That's the last thing you need with a second baby on the way. Jason was pretty stressed three days before Christmas. That might be what pushed him to buy a lottery ticket that day, when he almost never did. According to Jason, he'd only bought a few lottery tickets in his life, but it's a good thing he decided to buy one this time. Overnight, all Jason's money problems totally disappeared. That lottery ticket was the winner of a $47 million jackpot. Jason did take advantage of his new wealth. He impulsively bought a boat, a motorcycle, a Mustang, and a house. But after his spending spree, he quickly changed his mind about the way he was spending his money. He realized he wasn't being smart and switched to a very different kind of spending instead. He started investing in a business. He bought a golf driving range to start, which earns him roughly $300,000 a year. He then decided to buy a Battery Plus franchise store in Fort Myers after visiting the one his friend owns. After that, he bought another three Battery Plus stores. All these stores bring even more revenue for Jason every year, and his battery business has made him into a local celebrity. He still earns money all the time, adding to all the lottery money he still has in his savings. Robert Salo Teenage lottery winners are usually the first to lose their fortune. They mostly don't think about their future, and that means they spend their money on the most stupid things until they have nothing left. Robert Salo wasn't one of those teenagers. He lived in Brooklyn, but his family wasn't very wealthy. He always wanted to be an electrical engineer, but he was already 18 years old and his family didn't have the money to pay for his studies so he could qualify for his dream job. He had pretty much accepted that he'd need to go into a different career when he bought a $2 scratch-off ticket. He had no idea that such a simple purchase would change his life. He won $1,000 a week for the rest of his life. That's about $48,000 a year before taxes. If you're thinking that only the big jackpots make a real difference, you're wrong. That meant that Robert could pay for his studies so he can become an electrical engineer like he had dreamed. And that's exactly what he did with the money. His parents didn't have to worry so much about him anymore, and he completed his qualifications. Even a small lottery win can help people to live the life they always wanted. If you want to play the lottery from the comfort of your own home, make sure to check out the link in the description below. It's fast and easy. Yancey Hicks If you think that Robert is the only person who turned his life around with a small win, you're wrong. Yancey Hicks can join that list. Yancey won the Illinois State Lottery jackpot. It wasn't a huge sum of cash. The jackpot was only $1 million. But that's more than enough to create a new life if you spend it wisely, which is exactly what Yancey did. Before the win, he'd been working at McDonald's for a very long time, and all that time, he'd been dreaming of being his own boss one day. It didn't look like that was ever going to happen until his lottery win. After that, he had the money to buy his own Subway restaurant. It was a great investment. The restaurant was a huge success and is still earning money today. Yanthi Fuligar and here's another teenager who bucked the trend and actually invested their money wisely instead of spending it on stupid stuff. Yanthi Fuligar was only 18 and living in Cumbria in England when she got her big win. She was working as a waitress and earning less than minimum wage at the time, but she dreamed of becoming a lawyer. She was only just old enough to even play the lottery. She'd bought a Euro Millions ticket and heard there were a few winners. However, she didn't think she was one of them. She was convinced she only picked three correct numbers. But when she watched the draw on TV that night, she listened as she realized all of her numbers were being read out, including the lucky star number, the equivalent of a Powerball. She'd won the jackpot. As I mentioned, she was one of a handful of winners who shared the 102 million pound jackpot. 
Yacht they share just top 7 million pounds, or about $8.6 million. That's a crazy amount of money for an 18-year-old to manage. She was mainly worried about losing her ticket, though, and spent ages hiding it around the house. Finally, she plucked up the courage to take it in and collect her winnings. By the time the money was in her bank account, she already knew what to do with it. She wanted to take a year to travel, and the destination she chose was Egypt. But that was her only extravagant purchase. She helped her parents to retire early and even bought them a house. She also replaced her decade-old Ford with a new car, but it wasn't anything flashy. Then, she paid for her studies to become a lawyer like she dreamed. She decided to live like a normal student, but she aimed to open her own law firm one day. Her millions would allow her to do that. Since then, she's kept a low profile. Sources saying she's one of the richest people in the UK are lying. But that doesn't mean she's lost all her money. More reliable sources say she's now worth about 10 million pounds. That's 3 million pounds more than she won. I guess that means her career as a lawyer is going well. So that was a pretty smart investment. Paul and Sue Rosenau Paul and Sue Rosenau were ordinary people. Sue worked at a research institute when she wasn't a stay-at-home mom, while Paul operated heavy machinery. They were pretty happy right up until about five years before their lottery win, when their family suffered a huge loss. Their two-year-old grandchild, Michaela, was diagnosed with crab disease. Many people don't know about this terrible disease because it's so rare, but this severe neurological condition mainly affects babies and toddlers, and it almost always ends in death. There's no cure. Unfortunately for the Rosenau family, all they could do was sit and watch as they lost their beloved granddaughter to this terrible disease. Five years later, Paul saw that the US Powerball had reached a record jackpot of 180.1 million. He only occasionally played the lottery, but he figured he might as well have a go. He kind of forgot about it until the draw came on while they were watching TV. Paul went to get his ticket while Sue shouted the numbers to him. By the time he got back into the living room, they were reading out the Powerball number. It matched. Paul told Sue they'd won, but she didn't believe him. He tricked her by saying that before, but Paul kept insisting. Eventually, Sue said they could go check the numbers. Because they didn't have the internet at home, they had to drive all the way to Sue's office to find out. It was worth the drive. Paul had won the jackpot. Luckily, Paul had an accountant friend who was able to advise them. They decided to pick the lump sum to help them retire early, and they took home $88 million. They couldn't have been more excited. They knew exactly what they wanted to do with all that cash, and it had nothing to do with mansions or flashy cars. In fact, they didn't even move out of their house. They kept living their lives just like before. They took a tiny portion of the money to make sure they could live comfortably in their retirement. They also took a little more for a trip to Hawaii and a family vacation to Disneyland with her children and one grandchild. But it was the grandchild that wouldn't be able to go that they were thinking about most. They knew exactly what they wanted to do with their millions. They founded the Legacy of Angels Foundation in honor of their late grandchild, Michaela. The foundation is dedicated to funding research into the treatment and possible cure for crab disease in babies. Thanks to the foundation, the knowledge of how to treat the horrific disease has advanced a lot further than it would have without them. Paul said they might even be only a few years away from finding a real cure for the disease. The couple said they had always been perfectly happy with their lives, and they didn't feel like they needed the money. They said they were much happier knowing that it could improve the lives of others. Well, if that's what makes them happy, they must be ecstatic because they've definitely improved people's lives. Soon, they might even be able to say they saved the lives of thousands of babies just like their granddaughter. If that's not a good way to spend your lottery win, I don't know what is. A Kentucky man who won part of the $280 million lottery jackpot has died. He received a lump sum of $27 million after taxes. In 2001, David Lee Edwards, a convicted armed robber with a substance abuse problem, was so broke he had to borrow money from a friend just to pay his water bill. With the change, he got a pizza and two lottery tickets. Little did he know, one of those lottery tickets would change his life forever. Overnight, he was catapulted from a life bouncing in and out of prison to one of extreme luxury, 
racehorses, and fast cars. His story was a real rags to riches tale and proved that Powerball can propel winners from poverty to excessive wealth in an instant. Americans spend over 70 billion on Powerball tickets every year, hoping to get as lucky as Edwards. But what's often overlooked is that 70% of those who find fortune through the lottery go broke within the first few years. And Edwards achieved this more spectacularly than most. Early Life and Struggles Edwards was born in 1955 and grew up in Ashland, Kentucky in a low-income family. His early life was marked by tragedy. His three-year-old sister died during open heart surgery the year he was born, and his eldest brother passed away after driving in the shallow water at Greenbow Lake. His mother, racked with grief, struggled to cope with the losses and kept their baby clothes hanging in Edward's closet. In his teens, he turned to marijuana and alcohol as a way to escape his troubles. At 16, he was caught committing a robbery and had his first run-in with the law. In another event, he got into a shootout with state police and had to be tear gassed before anyone got hurt. They sent him to a reformatory school, one he'd bragged that Charles Manson had attended, but it didn't stick and he dropped out before graduation. By age 18, he moved on from weed to harder drugs and his pattern of substance abuse and theft escalated. Then, when he was 26 years old, he attempted an armed robbery of his local gas station for $360 and was sent to prison for 10 years. He was let out on parole a few times and was able to meet someone, marry, and father a daughter named Tiffany. But he violated his parole as many times as he was released and was soon back in prison and divorced. In total, it took him 16 years to serve his 10-year sentence. Finally, behind bars, Edwards started to turn his life around. He got clean and began taking college courses, determined to make a better life for himself. And on his release in 1997, he started working in the building trade. Tragically though, addiction continued to plague him and he struggled to maintain a job. At one point, he even found himself homeless and living without his car. But it wasn't all bad. He met and fell in love with Shauna Maddox a waitress at Fiesta Bravo, and the two got engaged. He also inherited his parents' old $30,000 house, and although he was still broke, at least they had a roof over their heads. Then in 2001, something extraordinary happened that would change everything. The Lottery Win Edwards, who'd spent a third of his life in prison, was at this point in dire financial straits and struggling to make ends meet. Things had become so bad that they couldn't even pay their water bill and their supply was shut off. Feeling embarrassed and desperate, Edwards turned to a friend for help. He borrowed some money to turn the water back on and decided to take Shauna out for pizza and a drink to forget their troubles. On their way to the bar, they stopped at Clark's Pump and Shop and on a whim, they decided to try their luck and bought $7 worth of Powerball tickets. I went up there and played that lottery. I was sincere when I asked God to help me because I was desperate. I felt just desperate in my soul, just desperate. It had been 18 weeks without a winner, and the jackpot had ballooned to $280 million, the third highest on record at the time. That evening, Edwards and Shauna watched in disbelief as their numbers were called out, every single one. Along with four other winners that night, Edwards had just become a multi-millionaire. His share was 41 million, which amounted to 27 million after taxes. A hefty deduction, but still enough to set him up for life. Buy Shauna a very nice engagement ring, which I really couldn't afford before. And uh, Do you have a ring right now? I have no jewelry. No jewelry. Now, all lottery winners are given two choices. Take the lump sum, or accept yearly payouts for a specified amount of time. So, in Edward's case, he was offered $27 million on the spot, or $2.9 million a year for 25 years. Given his history, yearly payments would be the safer bet, but every financial expert advises taking the lump sum. This is because investing the lump sum will almost always generate more cash than the yearly payments will achieve. In one of his last wise decisions, Edward sought the advice of a financial advisor, James Gibbs, he devised a financial plan that, if followed, would generate $85,000 in interest per month for the rest of Edward's life. He also protected a substantial portion of the fortune by investing $16 million of the profits in extremely safe bonds and annuities. 
With plans in place, Edward seemed ready to accept his huge ceremonial check. In spite of his past, he seemed grounded and sensible, saying, I didn't want to accept this money by saying I'm going to get mansions and I'm going to get cars, I'm going to get this and that. He also added, I would like to accept it with humility. I want this money to last for me, for my future wife, for my daughter, and for my future generations. With this attitude and such sound investments, what can go wrong? Edward's Lavish Lifestyle Mere moments after accepting his winnings, Edwards reversed course. Too impatient to wait for the cash to hit his accounts, his first move was to negotiate a $200,000 bank loan so he and some friends could make the trip to Las Vegas to celebrate. Within just five days, he squandered the full $200,000 and called his new lawyer to wire him more cash. Once the actual winnings arrived, he moved from a $30,000 rundown, unwatered Kentucky home to a 6,000 square foot, $1.6 million mansion in a gated neighborhood in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, complete with tennis courts and a golf course. Then he spent another $1 million buying a fleet of expensive vehicles, including a $200,000 Lamborghini Diablo and a $90,000 Dodge Viper. Our series Bentley Rolls Royce Convertible. And Shauna, you told me you were going to get a car, too. Tell me about that. Well, it's between three, actually. Okay. Dodge Viper, a Lamborghini, or a Ferrari. I really haven't decided which one yet. In fact, he bought so many vehicles that his neighbors objected to the gated community's board of directors. What was their gripe? He accumulated so many that their affluent neighborhood had begun to resemble a car lot. Next, he bought a $600,000 Palm Springs property nearby, an $80,000 gold watch, a $160,000 ring, a $30,000 plasma TV, three racing horses, and a collection of 200 imitation medieval swords and armor. Then, to ensure he never had to travel between his estates in California and Florida like a chump on a commercial aircraft, he bought a private Learjet for $1.9 million and hired his own personal pilot. He also attempted some business investments with the best of intentions, but without Gibbs' input. These included three racehorses, which he got for a bargain due to 9-11 reducing overseas buying competition, a limo business, and a $4.5 million fiber optics installation business. Within three months, Edwards had blown through $3 million by the end of the first year, he'd squandered 12 million, getting close to half of his fortune. Tiffany. The only pledge he stuck to was regarding his family. His daughter Tiffany, who was 11 by this point, had been living with her mother while Edwards bounced in and out of prison, and he missed her. When he found out he'd won, she was his first phone call. Are you sitting down, he asked. Daddy's won the lottery, baby. I'm sending some people to come get you. The young girl freaked out and went running through the house, yelling and screaming. When she arrived to meet him at the hotel, the room was full of gifts, including a teardrop diamond ring. Unfortunately, there was a dark side to Edward's speed in reuniting with his daughter. As Tiffany would later explain, the reason my dad sent people to get me was because of the security risk. He was known around here by people who knew I was his only daughter. He was worried they would kidnap me for money. Quickly, he paid off his $8,300 in delinquent child support and sent his ex-wife $500,000 for full custody of Tiffany. Her room in his mansion was decorated with angels and included a pink princess canopy bed, computer, and flat screen TV. And he hired nannies, maids, and a butler to look after her and one of Shauna's children. Once a month, or whenever she felt like it, she'd fly home on the private jet to visit her mother. For her 13th birthday, he rented out the presidential suite at the Ashland Plaza Hotel for a slumber party, and he spoiled her with trips on yachts and a Cinderella's castle in Disneyland. Of course, not all his purchases were smart. He wasted $35,000 on a Hummer golf cart, which she was too young to drive, and enrolled her in a $16,000 a year private school, which she hated. Substance abuse. Regrettably, Edward's excesses did not stop at cars, planes, diamonds, houses, and private jets. He and Shauna, now his wife, still struggled with addiction, 
and the cash only made it easier to fall into old habits. Edwards became, once again, absent from Tiffany's life, leaving her care to the nannies, and together, he and Shauna spent $200,000 each a month on illegal substances. Prescription pills and hard drugs were their drug of choice, and Edwards was extremely generous with both Shauna and his friends. Her oxycontin use got so bad that Edwards paid $80,000 for her to spend 60 days at Passages Malibu, an upmarket rehab clinic. The friends were not so lucky. Many of them died of overdoses, and Edwards paid for each of their funerals. Tragically, Shauna's rehab didn't stick, and their relationship became more volatile. Tiffany would later accuse her of stealing Rolexes and cars from Edwards, saying Shauna just started acting crazy. It was drugs, that's all. People keep telling my dad he should get rid of her, but he never could. He told me, near the end, that his one regret was not getting rid of Shauna and looking after himself, but they were hooked on each other, and then they were just hooked on drugs. In 2004, Shauna stabbed Edwards during a drug-fueled rage with a crack pipe, and the Palm Beach police were called to their estate. The following year, the police were called again, and this time, they found large stashes of cocaine, heroin, prescription drugs, crack, and used syringes in the couple's bedroom. Edwards and Shauna both acquired hepatitis from using dirty needles. The Downfall to Absolute Zero By 2006, the money was gone, but worse than that, Edwards was in debt. His racehorses, one of which he hoped to name Powerball, all turned out to be losers, and his many investments failed because of his lack of business sense and poor judgment. This left him with rising debt, and he was sued by both his creditors and former business partners. His financial advisor, Gibbs, was dumbfounded and told reporters, if he followed my investment advice, he'd be pulling in about $85,000 a month for the rest of his life. Instead, he sold the lot. Everything he'd bought was sold, stolen, or repossessed, but he still owed Bank of America $170,000 for his credit card purchases and the state of Florida $50,000 in property taxes. The bank foreclosed on their Florida home, and Edwards and Shauna were forced to relocate to the rented warehouse that had been used to store his fleet of cars. Tiffany and her stepbrother were taken in for foster care. In the beginning, it was good, she said. I had a dad. That's all I'd wanted. In the end, I was devastated because I'd lost my dad, and I knew it. In the midst of accusations of adultery and abuse, Edwards and Shauna finally broke up, and he spiraled into misery and drug addiction. Conditions in the storage unit rapidly deteriorated until he was discovered there, living in his own feces, surrounded by rotting food, crack pipes, and syringes. His next step was rehab, and once clean, his ex-wife and her husband arrived to take him back to Kentucky. There he survived on disability payments and food stamps in a trailer park, a far cry from his previous opulent lifestyle of mansions and fast cars. But more than his wealth, he missed his friends and family who were gone or dead, and Shauna, who had quickly remarried. Despite being off the drugs, his liver was shot, his health started to deteriorate, and in 2012, he was diagnosed with liver disease. Then, in 2013, just 12 years after his historic win, he passed away in hospice, alone, and he was cremated as there was no money to bury him. He left Tiffany with nothing, not even a life insurance policy. She'd later reflect, would he still be alive if he hadn't won? Yes, I think he would. Watch on to see 11 strict rules Powerball winners have to follow. Number 11, don't lose your ticket. Maybe this one's obvious, but if you have a winning Powerball ticket, hold on to it. For big jackpots, you're gonna have to bring that ticket in person to your state lottery commission if you wanna collect. They don't keep track of who bought what ticket. If your dog eats it or it falls into a black hole, you are 100% out of luck. And if someone steals it, well, did you sign it? because if you didn't, the person who stole it might just say it's theirs. That might be what happened with the $2 billion Powerball jackpot at the beginning of 2023. On Valentine's Day, a man named Edwin Castro handed in the winning ticket and took the lump sum payout of just under $1 billion. 
But now another guy named Jose Rivera claims that he's the one who should get the jackpot. Rivera says he bought the winning ticket from a service station, but then a guy named Reggie stole it from him. Did it really happen? Unknown. How did the ticket get from Reggie to Edwin Castro? Unclear. But the California Lotto stepped up to say if any crime was committed, that's none of their business. They just know Castro's the guy who handed in the ticket. So he's the winner. So sign your ticket and keep it safe. Then make your first big decision. Number 10. Pick your poison. Lump sum or annuity. You have to choose between getting your money all at once or getting regular payments over 30 years. That's a tougher choice than it sounds like, because either way, you're not going to get the whole value of the jackpot. Buckle up. Say you want a $10 million jackpot. Do you take the lump sum payment or the annuity? If you take all your money now, they don't give you $10 million. The lump sum payout is usually just 61% of the jackpot. That's right, if you want it now, they're keeping 39% right off the top. A $10 million jackpot turns into a $6.1 million jackpot. So maybe you settle for annuity payments over 30 years. That way, you get every dollar of the jackpot, but most of it will come 10, 20, or 30 years from now. Inflation is going to mean that that money will be worth a lot less when you get it than it is today. Consider this, inflation has made the dollar worth almost exactly half of what it was 30 years ago. So you should expect a similar hit to the purchasing power of a payment you get 30 years in the future. The Lottery Commission will invest the money for you but they'll play it safe. They don't want to lose your money, but it won't grow as fast as inflation. You can almost certainly do better by investing it conservatively yourself. And you're not done losing money yet. Number 9. Pay taxes on your winnings. That's right, even though the money's coming straight from the government, you get to give some of it back right away as taxes. You'll have to pay federal, state, and local taxes on that big pile of income. The lottery holds back just under 29% to cover that if you're a U.S. citizen, but might owe even more depending on where you live. So if you won that $10 million jackpot and took the lump sum, it already got knocked down to $6.1 million. Next, Uncle Sam and friends take their share. And you've got, let's see, a little under $4.5 million left. That's right, less than half of the jackpot that you actually get to keep. And don't even think about skipping out on those taxes. The government knows exactly how much money they gave you. But at least now, you get to spend your 10, I mean 6, I mean 4 million dollars. And once you start spending your money, your life is probably never going to be that simple again. Which brings us to our next unofficial rule. Number 8. Hire an accountant and an attorney. It's time to hire some people to help you out. Guess what? You can afford it now. Don't be stingy here. Unless your big dream for winning the lotto was to spend all your time doing paperwork. You need help managing your money. Want to hear a scary statistic? One in three lotto jackpot winners go bankrupt. You want an accountant because every big thing you spend money on is going to make your taxes more complicated. And you need an attorney because you're going to have legal problems. Sorry. In fact, you should really find a lawyer before you even collect your jackpot. But once you collect, you need to get ready to get sued. When people hear that you hit the jackpot, a lot of them are going to try to get something out of you. And you want a lawyer from a big national firm, not someone who's worked with your family or friends. Because it might be your family or friends who sue you. Take Bud Post. He won the Pennsylvania Lotto in 1988. Then his girlfriend, who was also his landlady, sued him, saying Post had agreed to split the jackpot with her. The judge cited against Post, and he had to give up a third of his $6 million prize. Our next rule is one you might not think of, but it's non-negotiable. Number 7. You have to claim your prize in the state you played in. Does this one sound obvious? Well, different states have different rules about collecting your prize. After you bought your winning ticket, you don't get to shop around for the state with the best rules. But when you hear about this next rule, you'll understand why you want to. Number 6. The state gets to share your identity. Obviously, you've got to tell the Lottery Commission who you are so they can give you the money. The lottery then turns around and tells the public your name and how much you won. Some states even publish where the winner lives. It makes sense that the states want to do this. It's great publicity for the lottery. It proves they're actually paying the lottery. 
and not just keeping everyone's money or rigging it for the commissioner and all their friends. But it sucks for the winners. If it makes you nervous to imagine everyone in your state finding out you hit the Powerball jackpot, that's not just paranoia. Lottery winners are many times more likely to be victims of robbery, kidnapping, and even murder, like Gregory Birch Jr. In 2016, he won a $400,000 prize, not even one of the really big ones. Only two months later, a group of armed robbers broke into his house and killed him. He's just one sad example. Lately, more and more states have realized that announcing a lottery winner's name puts a giant target on their back. Now, 16 states let lottery winners stay anonymous. Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Kansas, Maryland, Minnesota, Mississippi, Montana, New Jersey, North Dakota, Ohio, South Carolina, Texas, Virginia, West Virginia, and Wyoming. For some of these states, winners only get to stay anonymous if the jackpot is big enough. Florida and Arizona have a weird rule. In those states, winners can stay anonymous, but only for 90 days. After the 90 days, the winner's identity is a public record. So basically, you get a 90-day head start on anyone coming after you. But what if you live in one of the other 32 states? Are you just out of luck? Well, there's one thing you can do. Number 5. If you want to stay anonymous, set up a trust. That fancy pants lawyer you hired is gonna be clutch. Because here's a little cheat. The law in most of these states says it's a public record who collects the prize money. But they don't say the prize money has to be collected by a human being. A trust is kind of a legal entity that handles money. You can have your lawyer set up a trust and then have the trust be the one who wins the lottery for you. In some states, this means the trust's name get made public and you remain anonymous. In other states, it's just an extra layer of protection. People can look up who owns the trust if they really want to know. And in California, unfortunately, this trick just isn't allowed. You might want to think twice about buying your ticket there. No matter what you do though, bad luck is going to find you. Which brings us to the next rule. Number four, get insurance. Get yourself some good umbrella insurance. No, that's not insurance in case your umbrella breaks. Umbrella insurance is liability insurance that kicks in where other insurance policies leave off. So, for example, if everyone on your block suddenly gets really clumsy and starts falling down in front of your house, and every personal injury attorney in town is beating on your door, your regular insurance will run out pretty fast. The extra insurance will keep people from bleeding you dry. That should go a long way to protecting you from people who want to take your money. But what about people you want to give your money to? Number three, decide how much to give away and stick to it. This is another rule that will keep you from losing all your money and all your friends. If you strike it big, you need to decide right away how much of the money you want to share. Will you give away 10%, 20%, 50%, Whatever that number is, you'll want to tell it to that big shot attorney you hired. They can set up trusts and foundations to give the money to charity, help your friend's kids through college, or whatever else you want to do. What you can't do is just give money to people whenever you feel like it, because people around you are going to act like you have infinite money, and you're probably going to feel like it's infinite too. But it's not infinite, and you'll find that out the hard way unless you follow the next rule. Number 2. Put up a safety net The way to get set for life is to invest a big chunk of money and never, ever touch it. Wait, that doesn't sound right, but it's true. Remember that $4.5 million after tax payout we were imagining? You'd want to take, say, $2 million of that and invest it in something really boring, like an index fund or treasuries. That big pile of money will grow a few percent every year. You want to live off that extra and never touch the original pile. 6% a year isn't a crazy return but 6% of $2 million is $120,000. That's a six-figure income. Most people have to work for that, but not you. But there's one more rule you have to keep in mind if you hit the jackpot. Number one, don't expect it to solve all your problems. Of course, having a huge pile of money can solve a lot of problems. Sometimes the problem is that you don't have enough money. Having more money is great for that, but as we've seen, Winning the lottery can create new problems. All that money can put a strain on your relationships. 
It can bring out the worst in people. It can bring out the worst in you. You've got to be careful. We already saw that a third of lottery winners go bankrupt. Lottery winners are also a whole lot more likely to overdose on drugs, get convicted of drunk driving, get charged with a felony, or commit suicide. So you have to keep your eyes open. Don't forget the things in your life that are really important. Hitting the Powerball jackpot can put you on top of the world, but if you don't follow the rules, you can end up falling even lower than you started. Like the lottery winners in our next video, these are some of the people who manage to win millions and then lose absolutely everything. Check it out now. Number 15. Rachel Kennedy and Liam McCrowan Rachel Kennedy and Liam McCrowan are a young British couple who won a gigantic lottery jackpot in 2021, almost. Every week, Rachel played exactly the same numbers on her Euro Millions lottery tickets. She was so dedicated, she'd set up her online lottery account to automatically buy a ticket with those numbers. Then, one week, Rachel and Liam checked the lottery draw and couldn't believe their eyes. The winning numbers for the 228 million Euro jackpot matched Rachel's numbers. They immediately started planning how they were going to spend such a gigantic amount of cash. The young couple realized their lives had changed forever. But when Rachel checked her online ticket, she spotted something weird. It wasn't there. She contacted the National Lottery website to find out what happened and got the worst possible news. There had been an error when the automatic ticket purchase was taking place and the payment never went through. In other words, she didn't have a ticket. They missed out on that mind-blowing sum of money, and there was absolutely nothing they can do about it. It might be the biggest lottery tragedy of all time, but at least their lives didn't change. The next winner lost more than he won. Number 14. Daniel Carley Canadian Daniel Carley won the Ontario Lottery at the most perfect moment ever. He was just about to marry the woman of his dreams, who also happened to be pregnant with their first child. He had a pretty perfect life already, but when he won an incredible 5 million Canadian dollars, or about 4.4 million US dollars, he was given the kind of financial stability that most new parents can only dream of. And his life would have been perfect if he'd used his money that way. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. Instead, he and his friends gathered at his dad's bar for a celebration party. That would have been just fine, but when the party ended, Daniel didn't want to stop, so he didn't. Over the next 10 years, he partied all his money away. It won't surprise you that his young wife left to look after his child in a more stable environment. His friends didn't want to know this out-of-control version of Daniel, so they disappeared from his life too. It wasn't long before he ran out of money, and when that happened, he turned to drugs again. But this time, he was selling them. He was eventually arrested and sent to prison for his crimes. Daniel chose a path that led him to losing his perfect life. But sometimes, lottery winners do everything right, and their story still ends in tragedy. That's what happened to the next winner on our list. Number 13. Francisco Guerrero Francisco Guerrero had been a hard worker his whole life. He'd worked as a bricklayer in Spain, slowly earning himself enough money to support his family, and even buying more than one house. That's pretty impressive. After all that hard work, it almost feel like he'd earned his lottery win. He hit a jackpot worth about $8.6 million. But he wasn't the parting type, and he didn't know what to do with all that cash. So, he figured the most responsible thing to do was to take it to the bank. That's the advice lottery winners are always given, so it sounds like a pretty good decision. The experts at the bank told him to invest 40% of his winnings and put the rest into a savings account for his children. That sounded like a good idea to him, and he left his money in their hands. He continued going to work and lived his life the way he did before winning the lottery. After all, he was pretty happy that way. But then, something went wrong. He suffered a serious injury to his knee that meant he needed expensive surgery. Luckily, he had millions in that savings account, thanks to his lottery winnings. He went down to the bank to withdraw some of his cash, but he was shocked to discover the account was totally empty. What he learned next would horrify anyone. The bank had put 40% of his winnings into a terrible investment. They told him there were no risks, but they were totally wrong. Not only had they lost his investment, 
but they'd got him into serious debt. To pay it off, they used all the cash in the savings account meant for his kids, and they'd even lost all the properties he'd earned through hard work. That's the perfect example of how many things can go wrong when you hit the lottery. It's pretty sad when someone loses everything because of someone else's mistake, but this next winner definitely caused their own downfall. Number 12. Evelyn Basor You could say Evelyn Basor was one of the luckiest people who ever lived. That's because she won the lottery not once, but twice and her two wins happened within just four months of each other. The first win in 1985 was worth a whopping $3.9 million, and the second, the next year, was another $1.4 million. That's a lot of cash now, but it was worth even more then. She could have done nearly anything with it, so what did she choose to do? Well, she took it to the casino. I guess she figured her luck worked for her in the past, and she'd make even more money, but she was wrong. Her winning streak was over, and the last time anyone heard of her, she was living in a trailer park and working two jobs to pay for food. That's a pretty irresponsible way to spend your lottery winnings. But she's not the only winner who blew all her cash. Here's another one. Number 11. Michael Carroll At the tenor age of just 19, British teen Michael Carroll won the lottery. He collected the $14 million, with a police ankle bracelet still around his leg. That probably gives you a good idea of what happened next. He spent wildly buying a mansion he didn't like and spending even more on fixing it up. He built a demolition derby racetrack in the back garden where he'd destroy luxury cars. He was starting the day with cocaine and vodka for breakfast, and he spent millions on sex parties in the mansion, even though he had a wife and child. Soon, his family and friends had left him because he was behaving so badly. Lucky for him, when he went broke, his wife decided to take pity on him, and she came back. That's a surprisingly happy ending, considering he said he'd be dead by now if he still had the money. But not everyone gets their life back after. Just ask. Number 10. Andrew Jack Whitaker Andrew Whitaker was living a pretty comfortable life before he won the lottery. He already had $17 million that he'd earned himself. There's no doubt that's impressive but his fortune skyrocketed when he got lucky and won the lottery too. His win was a gigantic $315 million. You'd think that because he was pretty rich already, he would have known how to keep that money, but fate had other plans. Criminals got the better of him, totally emptying his bank account with several robberies. Within just four years, he was totally broke. He'd even lost the millions of dollars he'd had before winning the lottery. He's not the only winner who was taken advantage of. This next winner was also treated pretty badly. Number 9. Callie Rogers Back in 2003, Callie Rogers was living in foster care and working in a supermarket. Then, she suddenly made headlines when she became the world's youngest ever lottery winner. She was only 16 at the time, but she now had an incredible $2.3 million in the bank. The British teen totally changed her life with that money, but sadly, not in a good way. She started spending it on crazy stuff, with no role models to help her make good decisions. She also developed a drug habit, and her strange lifestyle made her depressed. That led her to spend tons of cash on plastic surgery, hoping to feel a little better about herself. But it didn't help. She said the money made her feel like nobody cared about her because she would buy drinks for people in bars who were only talking to her so they can get a story they could sell to tabloids. She lost every cent she won and now campaigns to try to change the minimum age for lottery players. Luckily, Callie says she's much happier now she doesn't have the money anymore. She's also a proud mom of three. But what about this next teenage lottery winner? Number 8. Jane Park Jane Park was earning just $9 an hour at an office job in 2013. It was her birthday, and she decided to treat herself to her first ever lottery ticket. Incredibly, that ticket hit the jackpot. She won the equivalent of $1.3 million thanks to the Euro Millions lottery, and she was only 17 years old. Unfortunately, instead of using it to start her adult life so she could follow her dreams, she just spent it. Her first purchase was a Louis Vuitton handbag, and that was pretty much how she continued. She bought luxury cars, holidays, and even plastic surgery. It didn't take long before her crazy lifestyle stopped being fun. She said she began to feel depressed and very lonely. 
Luckily, she could move back in with her mom and try to get her life back on track. Her mom had been pretty clever and had made sure she put some of Jane's winnings into a savings account. So Jane still had some of her millions. And like Callie, she also campaigns to get the minimum legal age for playing the lottery changed. She says she was just too young to handle it. Jane and Callie might be right. Maybe teenagers don't have the maturity to manage that much cash. But our next winner proves that adults can be pretty irresponsible too. Number 7. Keith Go. Keith Go was 58 when he won the lottery. He was a happily married baker when he hit the UK National Lottery jackpot. He went home with winnings equal to $12 million. He could have retired with that money, but instead, he decided to spend it. All he wanted to do was drive fast cars, bet tons of cash on horse racing, spend time in his private executive box at Aston Villa Football Club, and drink loads of alcohol. That's when the real problem started. Tragically, his alcohol addiction finally got so bad that his wife was forced to leave him. That wasn't an easy decision. They loved each other, and splitting up really hurt them both. Before Keith won the lottery, they had been looking forward to retiring and living a peaceful life together. Sadly, soon after his wife left, Keith passed away due to a heart attack. Most people are pretty sure he died of a broken heart. Keith isn't the only lottery winner to die as a result of what he chose to do with his money. But this next story is much weirder. Number 6. Justin Ryder Justin Ryder's lottery win wasn't as big as most people on this list. He only got 600000 but he wasn't worried. To him, that was just his chance to afford his ultimate dream. Don't even try to guess what it was. It's too crazy. Justin had watched the classic Austin Powers film Goldmember, and it had given him an idea. He wanted a gold member of his own. So he went out and spent his lottery winnings on some gold paint. And when he got home, he'd happily dipped his nether regions into it. Then, he just went on with his life as normal, glad that he achieved his dream. But it wasn't long before he realized something didn't feel right. So, he went back to the store and bought another tin of paint. This time, he chose the more expensive option, which was colored with real gold. But weirdly, he chose not to wash off the first coat before redipping. That was his big mistake. The first pot of paint he bought was lead-based paint and the toxic ingredient was slowly absorbing into his bloodstream. Sadly, he was found dead soon after. The cause of death was lead poisoning. He's not the only lottery winner who didn't do enough research before spending his winnings. Here's another one that made a big mistake by not reading the fine print. Number 5. John McGinnis Back in 1997, John McGinnis was working as a hospital porter when he hit the UK National Lottery jackpot. His winnings were equal to about $16.4 million, which was a ton of cash back in the 90s. He was pretty generous with his winnings, but he also used some to buy luxuries for himself. But he wasn't spending too widely, definitely not enough to go broke. He decided to spend some of his fortune on his biggest passion, football. So he bought a whole team. It cost him $4.9 million. That's a lot of cash, but he still had loads left, except for one mistake. He had no idea that by buying the team, he was accepting personal responsibility for their debts. Within 12 years, the team's debts had eaten through every cent John had won, plus his own personal savings he'd earned before winning the lottery. He tried to follow his passion, but ended up broke instead. There's no shortage of lottery winners like John, who accidentally picked up a really bad deal. Here's another British winner who made a bad British choice. Number 4. John Roberts John Roberts was so poor before winning the lottery that he was living in government housing in Scotland because he couldn't afford to pay rent. We can only imagine what it must have felt like to suddenly win over $5 million. Unfortunately, he didn't really know what to do with all that cash, so he started buying any luxury item he could dream of. But that wasn't his biggest mistake. One day, two of his friends came to him with a business deal. They easily convinced him to invest. John loved the idea of going into business with friends, except they weren't really his friends. Sadly, they would lied about the investment, and they took off with the last of John's money. Just three years after his big win, he was broke and living in a mobile home. It's definitely true, you gotta be careful when choosing your friends. Here's another lottery winner who found that out the hard way. Number 3. Marie Holmes 
Marie Holmes was a single mom who was working three jobs to put food on the table. Then, in 2015, she got lucky when her North Carolina Powerball ticket won her a whopping $188 million. That was her share of a larger $564 million jackpot that was split between three winners. Her problem started straight away when her family accused her of stealing the ticket. They'd said Marie's mom was actually the one who chose the numbers. It turned out they were right. Marie thought it was a quick pick ticket, but her mom had carefully chosen the numbers for her. But luckily for Marie, her mom said she wanted her to have the ticket. After that, Marie's life only got worse. She tried to do something good by giving money to her church, but the priest sued her for not giving them as much as she'd said at the start. Then, she started spending way too much cash, and she kept having to bail her heroin trafficker boyfriend out of prison. Brace yourself, the cash she spent on his bail added up to a mind-blowing 21 million. Crazy, right? It didn't work. He still got a prison sentence in the end. You'd think he would at least be grateful, but he later sued her from prison when she sold some of the expensive gifts she bought him. She's basically broke these days. Marie was betrayed by a lot of people. She clearly didn't deserve to be sued for generously giving people money, but this next winner did the opposite and caused her own problems. Number 2. Tanya Lynn Dickerson This story started in Waffle House. The group of waitresses who worked there had become pretty close over the years, and they decided they would buy some lottery tickets together. The idea was that each one would buy a ticket, and if any of the tickets won, they'd split the winnings between them. It was a nice thought, even if none of them expected to win. But they were wrong. One of the waitresses checked her ticket the next day and realized it was worth $10 million. There was just one problem. Tonda was the holder of the winning ticket, and she decided she didn't want to share. Obviously, the other waitresses were pretty unhappy about that. Not only had they lost out on their money, but they had also been betrayed by someone they thought was their friend. So, they got together and sued Tonda. Unfortunately, they lost the case, and Tonda got away with all the cash. By then, the boss from Waffle House had heard what she'd done. He couldn't believe she treated her friends like that and got away with it, so he tried to get some justice for the waitresses. He sued Tonda, saying the waitress had promised to buy him a new truck if they'd won. The case went all the way to Supreme Court, but Tonda eventually won again. She would nearly got away with it, but then she slipped up. Tonda decided to protect her money by opening a corporation. That would have been safe, except that she gifted shares of the corporation to her family. That was a big mistake because she didn't realize those shares qualified for gift tax. The IRS came after her when they realized the tax hadn't been paid, and she was forced to hand over $1 million. So none of her friends got the share of the money but at least she had to pay something. She's not even the only lottery winner who was meant to share the cash, but tried to take it all for herself. The last winner on her list got what was coming to her, though. Number 1. Denise Rossi Denise Rossi got super lucky one day when she hit the lottery jackpot. She won $1.3 million. That's pretty amazing news. So you'd think the first thing she would have done is tell her husband. After all, they've been married for 25 years. But she had other plans. She kept her win a secret, and instead of celebrating with her husband, Thomas, she asked for a divorce. She said later she didn't want him to get any of the money. She just wanted it all for herself and was happy to break up their marriage to get her way. But it didn't work. During her divorce proceedings, someone found out what she'd done, and that information really counted against her. According to the law, not disclosing the lottery win counted as fraud. In the end, she was ordered to pay all of her winnings to her now ex-husband. All these winners missed out on changing their lives one way or another, but it doesn't have to be that way. Take a look at our list of the smartest lottery winners in the world to see how to handle your lottery winnings the right way. Hey, millionaire. Anyone who loves the lottery, like we do, will all know that it's so great because it's a game of chance. 
you don't need any knowledge or skill to win it, which means absolutely anyone can play and stand a chance of winning. That's pretty great, because that way, nobody has an advantage. We're all equal when we play. But wouldn't it be nice to be able to increase your chances of winning? After all, the odds are never in your favor when you play the lottery. It's normally about a 1 in 300 million chance of winning, depending on which lottery you play. But even though lottery experts will tell you that the chance of winning is the same for everyone, and in a way, they're right, there is one thing you can do that might just increase your chances of winning. You can pick the numbers that win the most. Sure, some people use numbers that mean something important to them, and that might just be the way to go. A lot of players have won that way in the past, but some of you prefer to use knowledge to give you a leg up. We're here to give you all the info you need on the luckiest lottery numbers out there. Let's take a look at which numbers you should be picking for the top lotteries. Obviously, the luckiest numbers change depending on which lottery you play, so we're going to break it down by the most popular lotteries. But even then, the luckiest numbers do change all the time. We'll be talking about recent statistics that are likely to help you win now. Can you smile, man? If the numbers you worked out years ago were different, that's probably because the stats have changed. Also, using these numbers obviously doesn't guarantee a win, because then everyone would do it. And if everyone did, all the winners would receive less money than they paid for a ticket. But choosing them might just increase your chances of winning, and that's exactly what we want. So here are the numbers that come up the most, but stick around to see the end of the video, because picking the most common lottery numbers might just be the wrong way to play it. If you want to find out why, then stay with us. Let's start with the power Powerball Lottery. Of course, that's the one most of us will be interested in, because the jackpot seems to be huge all the time these days. It also still holds the record for the largest jackpot in history. We'd all like to increase our odds of winning a record-breaking jackpot. Since 2015, there's one number sitting right at the top of the Powerball draw, and that's the number 61. It has been drawn a whopping 78 times over the last seven years. However, at the time this video goes out, it hasn't been drawn once in the last two months. That might mean it's just about to pop up again, and that's our bet for the best number to choose right now, although it seems a good bet all the time. The number in second place is 32, which has been drawn 77 times since 2015, only one less than the number 61. Then we drop it down a little to 74 draws since 2015, that's the number 63. Then it's 21, 69, 62, 36, and 23, which have all been drawn 70 times or more since 2015. Those are all the most frequently drawn numbers for the US Powerball, but those are just the main numbers. You can't forget that you need to choose a Powerball number too, and that's a very different set of numbers that take the top spot. The number drawn the most for the Powerball is the number 24. It has been drawn 45 times since 2015, which makes it a pretty safe bet. The runner-up is number 18, which was drawn 42 times. Then the number 4, drawn only 36 times. And the numbers 10 and 21, which were only drawn 35 times since 2015. But that's a whole 10 draws less than the number 24, so I know what I'm putting my money on. But the Powerball isn't the only huge lottery you can play. The Mega Millions jackpots are also growing lately, and that lottery isn't too far away away from the huge Powerball jackpots. So let's have a look at those numbers too. Mega Millions might just be the lottery that gets you your big win. What's your lottery strategy? Tell us in the comments. You might just be onto something. But keep watching if you want to find out what numbers are really the best ones to pick on your lottery ticket. The Mega Millions lottery has two numbers that hold the top spot as the most commonly drawn numbers since 2017. They are the numbers 14 and 17, and both have been drawn 51 times. This is already looking pretty different from the most common Powerball numbers, right? The number in second place is 10, which has come up 49 times. The numbers 38 and 31 were both drawn 48 times since 2017. Then it's the number 64, with 46 draws over the last few years. In case you don't know already, the Mega Millions Lottery also has a separate number, like the Powerball, that you need to pick, but here it's known as the Mega Ball. Again, the most common Mega Ball numbers don't match most common Powerball numbers. In the Mega Millions, the most frequently drawn Mega Ball number is 22. It has come up 32 times since 2017. If that's not your lucky number, 
you can try the numbers 9 or 11 because they've both come up 26 times in draws since 2017, so they're pretty safe bets. The numbers 10 and 24 are tied in third place with 25 draws, but those lotteries can only be played in the US. What if you're in the UK? Don't worry, we can help there too. Can you click subscribe before another lottery player changes their lucky numbers? You have three seconds. Three, two, one. Now keep watching to find out the most picked numbers in the biggest UK lotteries and why they might not be the best numbers to pick. The UK National Lottery has pretty giant jackpots too, so it's definitely worth playing. Plus, as an added bonus, lottery winners in the UK don't need to pay taxes on their winnings. That means that unlike winners in the US, any UK winner will take home every cent advertised. That's pretty lucky, and we have the numbers you need to win it. The most drawn numbers for the UK National Lottery since 2015 is 52, which has come up a whopping 99 times. That's almost one in every seven draws. That makes it a much more reliable number than any of the numbers in the big US lotteries. Tied in second place are the numbers 39 and 58, which have both been drawn 89 times. Again, that's more draws than any number in a US lottery. The runners up are the same. The numbers 36 was drawn 88 times, 37 was drawn 87 times, and 27 was drawn 86 times. That might mean that if you want to pick seriously reliable numbers, then you better hope you can play the lottery in the UK. Their top numbers come up over and over again. But the UK lottery isn't the only popular lottery across the pond. Anyone in Europe will tell you that the Euro Millions is the one you should be playing. It's super popular and has jackpots to match. With so much cash on offer, you definitely want to win the Euro Millions. So what are the luckiest numbers? Well, if you thought the UK National Lottery had some reliable numbers, the Euro Millions is even better. The luckiest numbers are 19 and 23, and have both been drawn a whopping 173 times. The number in second place only missed the top spot by two draws. That's the number 50. 42 was drawn 170 times, and the numbers 38 and 21 were both drawn 169 times. That really is a lot of draws for the same numbers to show up, and loads of them show up over and over again in jackpot draws too. That's pretty amazing odds if you're looking for a lottery where the same numbers are pretty much guaranteed to come up. But is choosing the most frequently drawn balls the way you want to play? Or is this all a trap? Well, some theories say the most frequent numbers are the ones you should avoid. Why? Let's find out. Do you play the same numbers every time? How do you pick them? Tell us in the comments and keep watching for some expert number picking strategies. One of the biggest problems with picking the most common numbers is that loads of people are doing the same thing. Why should you care? Because imagine your numbers really did come up. Every single one appears in the jackpot draw, just like you hoped. That's great, right? Well, if you choose the most common numbers, and they're the ones that won you the jackpot, there will be a lot of other people out there who are also watching the draw and thinking they've won a giant jackpot. All of you will be sharing the prize pot. That means even though you won, you're sure not keeping all the money for yourself. Think of it this way. If only 100 people in the country had the same idea as you, and all of you played the most common numbers and won it, then you're only going home with one one hundredth of the jackpot. So, if the jackpot is 100 million, you'll You'll only be getting 1 million for yourself, and if you're in the US, you'll still need to pay taxes on that too. Sure, it's still a lot of cash, but I'll bet that wasn't the jackpot you were hoping for. So, if choosing the most common numbers don't work, then what strategies should you be using to increase your odds of winning? Let's break it down. Firstly, you want to separate yourself from the pack. That way, if you do win, you're more likely to be the one person going home with the jackpot. The first way to do this is to make sure you pick a few numbers higher than 31. That sounds pretty random, right? There's a good reason a lot of people use their loved one's birthdays or other important dates as their lottery numbers. That's sweet and everything, but it means that most people are picking numbers lower than 31 because no month has more than 31 days. If you pick a few numbers over 31, you're setting yourself apart from many other lottery players. Another number to avoid is the number 7. You probably already guessed why. Loads of cultures around the world think seven is a lucky number, so everyone picks it in the hopes it'll bring them luck. It doesn't. 
Even if it does come up, you can bet most other players picked it too. In fact, when the University of Southampton in the UK did a study on the lottery, they found that the number 7 was 25% more likely to be picked than any other number. They also discovered something else that's seriously worth knowing. People love picking number sequences. The worst numbers to pick are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It seems like a pretty lazy way to choose lottery numbers, but 10,000 people in the UK choose those numbers every week. That means if you won a $1 million lottery jackpot with those numbers in the UK, you'd be taking home just 100 bucks. You can bet it's the same in the US too. Also, any variation of that sequence is best avoided. In other words, no 11, 22, 33, 44, 55, 66 numbers if you want to avoid disappointment. Another number to avoid, amazingly, is the number 13. It turns out, as unbelievable as it sounds, that it really is unlucky. 13 is the least frequently drawn ball in a whopping eight major international lotteries. So it's true that if you do pick that number, you'll be one of the few people who were brave enough to pick the world's most unlucky number. And that means you're almost guaranteed to take home the whole jackpot to yourself. But there's a big chance that even if all your other numbers come up, that number 13 is going to be the one that ruins your shot at the jackpot. I'd avoid it if I were you. So we've looked at what you shouldn't do, but on the flip side, what numbers should you pick if you want to win? Well, there aren't any good answers, except that you should avoid numbers that everyone else is choosing. Remember, no matter how many times a number has been drawn in the past, that doesn't guarantee it'll come up in the next draw. The numbers really are random, so your best bet is actually to avoid the most common numbers rather than picking them. And some would say that means that your best option is a quick pick selection. Basically, just let the computer choose for you. That way, your numbers are guaranteed to be totally random, just like the draw. A surprising number of lottery jackpot winners have won with that method, so it might be a good way to go. But when it comes down to it, it's totally up to you what you choose. Maybe the best way to play is to just go with your gut and keep your fingers crossed. Enjoyed this video? Then you need to watch this one if you want to improve your chances of winning the lottery.